Hey everyone, happy Thursday to you. Well, today is kind of an exciting Thursday. First and foremost, because we're talking about how to study God's word. And so I'm so excited for what we have in today's episode, but it's also exciting because today is actually my birthday. And my friends at work slash church, I mean, they're the same place for me, seem to be a little bit excited, at least especially Lester was, because he decided to come in and celebrate with me a little bit earlier. Well, let me just show you what happened. Where's my GoPro? Where's your GoPro? Chelsea. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh. Happy birthday. <laughs> So special shout out to Lester, who not only sprayed me with that confetti cannon, but also cleaned it up afterwards. Lester, you're a great friend and a great fan of the Thursday show. So thank you for celebrating with me. Before we get into today's episode, if you could like, comment, subscribe, I guess you could comment on if you've ever used a confetti cannon with somebody, or you can comment on what you think about our Bible study series. I would love to hear from you guys. Well, we're gonna get into it today and we're going to talk about context. Context is king, is a phrase that I heard when I was going throughout my college education at Moody Bible Institute. Context is king. So what is context? Well, context is really understanding the setting, the history, the literary style that is used with a particular verse or particular passage. What is challenging about context is that we read the Bible through our 21st century lens and perspective. We can't help it. So when we're reading the Bible, even though it was written in a different country at a different time to a different people group with different customs, we bring our country time people group and customs to the table with how we read and understand scripture. And so that's where understanding context is so helpful for us because it allows us, even though we live in the 21st century, to understand the Bible that was written 2000 years ago. So we need to think through what was the original intended meaning because one verse can't have multiple interpretations. Think back to a couple of weeks ago when we talked through inductive Bible study and how to do that. Do you remember the three steps? Observation, interpretation, and application. As we're studying the Bible, we're going to only find one interpretation, and that's the original intended interpretation when that verse was written. However, a verse can have multiple applications. The application is the part that we apply it to our lives and allow its truth to change and transform us. So remember, as we're understanding context, there's one interpretation, but there can be multiple applications. So how do we determine context? Well, there's four simple ways that we can determine context when we're reading through a Bible passage. The first way is the literal meaning. Understanding what was originally intended when that piece of scripture was written. See, it's important to realize that when a particular passage was written, it was written to a particular people group for a particular purpose. We can't take a verse and bend and twist it to mean what we want it to mean to us. That's not correct biblical interpretation and reading. The second way that we can have proper context when we're reading through scripture is looking at the historical setting. Who was it written to? What was going on? See, sometimes we might like a verse and want to just slap it on and apply it to us, but we need to look at the actual historical setting. This happens a lot with a key verse that I know for many people is their favorite verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to hurt you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So often people take that verse, they cling onto it, they make it their life verse. And while the truth in that verse can apply to us as well, it was originally written to Jeremiah the prophet for a specific purpose and mission that God was calling him to. So when we're reading through scripture, we need to look at the historical context and understand who God was talking to originally and what was going on that caused him to say that in that particular passage. The third way to make sure we have proper context is to look at the grammar. What are the sentences before and after the verse that we're studying actually saying? 
because we can't just take one verse as a standalone verse that we study. We need to look at the verses that surround it before and after. Honestly, even better yet, look at the entire chapter and the entire book that that verse is located in, because that will help us give a fuller understanding of what the entire passage is saying. And then the last way we can have proper context is to look at the synth synthesis, synthesis, which is looking at the entirety of scripture and seeing what all of scripture says about that topic or about whatever it is that we're studying. We need to let scripture help interpret scripture because scripture isn't going to contradict itself. So for example, in the New Testament in 1 John, when it says that God is love, we can't just take that one verse, that one piece of the verse, and let that become our entire theology. We need to look at all of what scripture says. Yes, love is a huge trait of the God that we serve, but the same God that we serve is also a God of justice and a God who hates sin. And so rather than having this hippy dippy feeling that God is love and love is God, we need to make sure we're looking at all of scripture and seeing what it says about the God that we serve. If we don't do this, it can be pretty dangerous for us as we're reading and interpreting scripture. It'd be like, think of Google Maps. If you zoomed in on Google Maps just on one house, maybe you go on Street View and you're looking at one house and you made an entire judgment about a whole city or neighborhood based on that one house, well, you might misinterpret the situation. You might make some false judgments about what you see because you're only looking at this one zoomed in perspective. We can't do that with the Bible. We can't zoom in and look at just one verse and make an entire theology based off the one verse. We need to look at all of those things, the literal meaning, the historical context, the grammar, and the synthesis in order to properly interpret and understand scripture. Well, I hope that was helpful for you today as you continue studying your Bible. I'd love to hear what other questions you have about how to study the Bible on a deeper level. So if you have thoughts or questions, leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them in future episodes of the Thursday show. But until next week, I hope you have an amazing one. I hope you have an extra great Thursday because I know I will. All right, I'll see you next week.